Don't be afraid to take risks. Don't be afraid to fail. Mm. And it's not the end of the world if you get it wrong. Right. Because we always get it wrong. Yeah. And you should always look at those as learning opportunities and you won't make that mistake ever again. Welcome to The Design Table, where I sit down with industry professionals and business leaders to talk about design and entrepreneurship. I'm so excited today because I have a very talented interior designer, Kara Myers, who has been running her business and has been crushing it at this game. So we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about all things fun design, and I hope that you find value to it. Welcome to The Design Thank Table. You. So how's everybody you going? You know, just chaos as always. <laughs> I know today you were like, like I'm, I'm picking up chairs for a client, even though it's a Saturday. But yeah, there's this person just working Monday to Sunday, right? Yeah, that's just yeah. what our life is. It's just the name of the game, yeah. right? You know, and we were super, super lucky that these chairs came in two weeks early. Yeah, and which so never th- happened. Yeah, it never happened. The <laughs> client happened to have a birthday party tomorrow, and I know she would really appreciate having them. So oh, I okay. went and got them for her on a Saturday, and yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. what made you go into interior design? Because I know you and I connected over Instagram mm-hmm. and uh, it feels well, this is the first time we're meeting but I know <laughs> like we've known each other because we share all of our like you know wins struggles. and struggles yeah. so what made you go into design like what's yeah business? yeah so I actually was in computer software before oh, wow. so I, different. yeah so this is really my I call it my third career because oh. I'm actually trained as a translator. That's what I went to school for. Okay. Then I landed in software, and now I have my own interior design and renovation business. Um, in 2019, my house burned down. Oh, um, right. Yeah, and so we lost everything, and kind of through that traumatic incident, it led us to rebuilding our home, which then led to me managing that build. Uh, part, we didn't yeah. have a general. I acted as the general um, while still working full time. And throughout that process, um, most of my trades had said, you know, like, you're in the wrong industry. You should oh. be doing this for a living. And you just had an eye for. Yeah. So I actually had an eye for project management. Okay. So not so much the design portion of it. I had always obviously been interested in design. My grandfather was an architect. Okay. My aunt was a graphic designer. So, it, and my mom always loved interior design. So it's kind of always been within my family to be artistic and creative. Um, but I was very good at managing the project. And so when I decided, you know, maybe I should try this, um, I was like, I want some help um, and some education on the design side. Mm. And that's what led me to the Interior Design Institute. Right. Which we did the course together. Course. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So I did that, went all in, um, and then started the business as kind of a Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And then now I'm going in my third year and it's booming. And it's so it's amazing. Not easy. And but it's I'm on like inflation and everything, right? Because mm-hmm. I think, and this is why I, I admire what you do is because you found your niche and you found a target market that was continuing to hire you for projects, even during the time where materials are high in cost, like there's a shortage of supply and mm-hmm. there's just inflation happening with homes and real estate, you know? So there's like finding that little group of people who are going to continue using your services is really incredible. So yeah, what, what, like, what were some of the things that made you put yourself out there and you were like, you know what, this is working out for me? Yeah. So it's interesting, the timing, because I actually started the business during COVID. Um, and so I found throughout the build of my own home, and obviously it was a very emotionally driven build. Mm-hmm. It wasn't so much I was designing the right, house. It right. was really to get a so home. Necessity yeah. and all that. Yeah, but what I found was that I was creating kind of a love of home mm-hmm. um, and like love your home. And mm-hmm. so that actually worked out really well that when I started the business during COVID, that's when our industry kind of boomed. Right. Yes, there's inflation. Yes, the prices are crazy. Um, availability is crazy, but people were stuck in their houses. And so I think that our industry actually was one that took off from COVID because people started to see, you know, this is where we reside and this is where we should invest mm-hmm. and really make it our home and somewhere that we enjoy being, which was great because that's really what led me to start the business is to bring that 
love of your home mm-hmm. and that like enjoying your space as a family or, you know, as young professionals, whatever it may be. Um, and so I think I was very lucky that, um, I was able to tell my story and people connected to that. Mm-hmm. And then when they were thinking about renovating, then they, they started, started they reaching out. out right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I want to talk a little bit about, I know you mentioned about inflation has been happening, but the industry of design has been booming. Mm-hmm. So just for context for people to, I, I think within Canada, what's happening is when people were locked down in their homes, they didn't have, I guess, any means to spend their money. So families would go on vacations and things like yeah. that. So you're saying that because of that, people had the extra money and disposable income to actually renovate their homes and like mm-hmm. do all of that. Yeah. So in, in that process, when you started your business, what would you say was kind of like your biggest challenge in really putting yourself out there? Because obviously, if somebody is trying to renovate their home, they want to go to somebody who has years of experience, right? That's always a struggle that us entrepreneurs get into because how do we, we know we're good, we're talented, but how do we put our trust, I mean, let the audience put our trust in us? So what, what were some of the things that you did to get through that? Yeah, I actually really struggled with that. I think like all people, um, new business owners, um, and then also imposter syndrome is right. like oh my God. totally real. Yes. And <laughs> you know, you, you listen to podcasts of other designers or read books and it's not, uh, like an isolated feeling. It's like everyone gets it. Right. Even if, you know, you're yeah. trained. And so I think for me, because I wasn't formally trained, mm-hmm. That was always in the back of my mind. And I think in the early days, um, I was very timid during consultations. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take my time and really think about the advice or the, Mm -hmm. um, the things that I was suggesting. And so it led me to take the work home after a consultation and then spend hours and hours and hours making sure that what I was suggesting was, um, was going to actually work, you know? Okay. So that, that was a problem with me. So I think that I put myself out there, um, and didn't make a lot of money Mm -hmm. in the beginning because I was spending copious amounts of time making sure that everything was perfect for little to no money, Mm -hmm. as you kind of know everyone in this industry does. Um, and, but it led me to meet a lot of people. You know, I had fairly cheap consultation rates Mm -hmm. and I was putting in extra work that other designers wouldn't have done. Now I've learned since then that that's not the right approach Mm -hmm. to take. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And I was very lucky in the beginning to land a a fairly good sized job that would get me really great content. Right. And so from there, I think that it, my leads happened organically Mm -hmm. through word of mouth, Mm -hmm. through Instagram and through the content that I was able to create Mm -hmm. with my first big project. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. What you said is about at the beginning, you don't make a lot of money and that's okay because I feel like some, some people, and especially when I get, you know, other aspiring designers who reach out to me on Instagram or social media and they ask for advice, they come to me being frustrated with, Hey, I am doing this as a career and I'm not making enough. And I have to just, you know, politely remind them, at the beginning year or so, like you should mentally prepare yourself that you're not going to be making optimal amounts of money. But, yes. but like to what you said, you actually learn from investing time in teaching yourself. This is what I'm learning from the consultation so that now at this stage in your career, you can charge more and be yeah. comfortable with this is the value I'm providing. Right. Yeah. So I think it's really important to, ha- to be prepared for that. And like, I'm not going to make that much money initially, but eventually if you do things right and if people are coming organically to you, yeah. then you know you're doing a good job, right? Yeah, exactly. And building that confidence, like obviously as a business owner, you have to invest your time and your energy and it's not always a monetary value mm-hmm. that you're going to get out of it. If you can push through that time, if you have the means to be able to make it through that time, it's going to eventually pay off in right. a monetary way. Right. Um, I also think that... The confidence that I built in those early years, like there is no monetary value for that because now I go into a consultation and I'm 100% confident Mm -hmm. what I'm going to say and what I'm going to charge and that sort of thing. And just before we started, we started 
filming this podcast, we, we talked a little bit about how you have a really good understanding of your clients and who you want to work with and who to. you don't work with, <laughs> right? And that's something that you've learned over trial and error at Absolutely. the very beginning. So now when you go to a consultation, you're not just confident in the value you're providing, but you're also confident in engaging your client yeah. and seeing whether their personality works with you or not. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk a little bit about what do you recommend for somebody who's starting off their business and they're they're wanting to take on clients, do you think they should take on all the clients at the beginning and then kind of make their way? Or at the beginning, should they be firm and say, no, this is my... Because that's a very... It's a... It's a it's yeah, a, that's a hard question. Yeah, it's a hard question because I yeah. have my own opinion on it, but I always yeah. like, you know, hearing... I would be interested to hear yeah. your opinion. Um, so for me, I think that the majority of people will say yes to everybody at the beginning. Mm. And uh, I know that I did because it was... Like, where's my income coming from? Right. So if I That's say true. if I say no to this, am I actually going to have a job? Mm -hmm. Then you go through a few years of being in business mm -hmm. and realizing that that is going to be there. You're going to make it work, um, and you get the con. You you have enough confidence to be able to say no. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I've just started doing, mm -hmm. to be quite honest. So I think that if you are strong enough. Mm -hmm. um, if you are able to handle a lot, saying yes to everything in the beginning is not a bad thing necessarily. Mm -hmm. Yep, because, I agree with you. Because you yep. learn a lot. Yep. Um, so I look back and there's even my very first project, it was very, very tough. And I know you had a similar experience right. yes. as we spoke about it. Yeah. Um, but I look at the lessons that I learned during that project yeah. and I am like, wow, for me to learn that on my very bit, my mm -hmm. very first big project, was a blessing in mm -hmm. disguise, mm -hmm. I think. Yep. Um, so if I would have seen those red flags early and said no to it, then I wouldn't have had that yep. to refer back to, yep. right? And I always, like, I mentally make note of certain things mm -hmm. um, that I can say to new clients or prospective clients and say, this is why I do it this way. This is why I charge 50% up front mm -hmm. because I haven't done that in the past and I get through the whole design where I'm taking my fee and they're like, oh, actually... We're not going to renovate anymore. Yeah, yeah. But I, oh my god, that happens all right? the time. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have like real <laughs> life experiences where I can stand in conviction and say, "This is why I do this," mm -hmm. and um, and here's my real life experience with it. And maybe you wouldn't be the client to do that to me, but it's happened to me before. Right. And I so, know. Oh yeah. Never at the beginning, clients are always amazing, yeah. and they bring in the best yeah. vibe. But then, <laughs> you know. And and I I empathize with what happens with them too because you know it's their home it's yeah. their most like sacred purchase that they've made and it's yeah. their family dwelling and all that so when things don't go wrong and in our field it's funny I was talking to another designer and she's like we're the bearer of bad news all right? right so yeah. <laughs> when we bring in the bad news like we don't have control over it but it just sucks that they have to you know yeah. and live with that and, and and not only the bearer of bad news but also the throat to choke no. even though it's <laughs> right even though yeah. it's not our fault you know right. the delays aren't our fault or you know something's not quite right mm -hmm. you know but we're the we're the face yeah we right? have to and, and yeah, we totally. have to take the grunt of that yeah even if the painter you know, yeah. painted something and there's a streak of paint yeah. running down. They're not hired by us, mm -hmm. right? They're like subcontractors, but the client comes to us and says, oh, the yeah. paint job is not done properly. Yeah. And then you have to go and <laughs> consult with your painter, be like, hey, you know. Yeah. So that's another thing I realized. That's, that's funny yeah. that you say that, yeah, because I have to do that all the time. And sometimes, like, they do not seem like issues to me, yeah. but they're issues for the client. Yeah, yeah, so I, I know. Like, oh, okay, yeah. I'm really sorry, but that <laughs> light fixture is like a quarter inch out of level. Yeah, and you need you to, to go fix, fix it. it. <laughs> and that's the other thing. Like I'm always, because I, I don't own the employment of these trade workers, I always feel like I still have to be courteous and very course, like, yeah. you know, tiptoeing around. Like, can you please get this done? Because if you don't, handle mm -hmm. the conversation properly and they might just like walk off from the job site so For sure that's another thing that i'm sure you can agree with as we have also learned how to become therapists mm -hmm. of like the, for the clients yeah or the trade workers yeah and that, right and and learning personality is not only the clients but the trades like yeah. as you know right most tradesmen and women have very specific personalities and i have been really lucky to work with great trades i have a I have a kind of what I call my A team of my sub trades who I love and trust, mm -hmm. but they all have little personality quirks. And I've, <laughs> I've had times where they're around a client and they're speaking and I know exactly what they're going to say or the tone they're going to use. And I 
just like let them, right? Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, so what's the solution? Yeah. You know, whereas a client might be a little bit more combative because it is mm-hmm. their home and they're like, you know, stop making excuses or doing this. Right. Whereas I just, you know, I'm there and mm-hmm. I listen and I, you know, listen to them maybe complain about other trades. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, you know, once they're done, it's like, okay, yeah. so how are we going to solve, we gonna solve this? <laughs> totally. And yeah. that's a skill set that you have to learn because yeah. not a lot of people, they could be super amazing at design and they could have the vision, but yeah. you need to be interpersonable. You need to have those skills to, you know, be able to speak and, you know, client relationship or all that stuff that for sure. are frill words. But then as I've been doing this yeah. profession, I'm learning that, okay, they're being a salesperson, being this, these are actual things that I need yeah. to, you know, smoothen up my... It's like soft skills yeah, that soft you skills. won't ever On a day-to-day learn. basis that we have mm-hmm. to do. Yes, I, I completely agree. And I think um, over, over this discussion, we've talked a little bit about some of the challenges that, you know, we run into the trade work, but I really want to know what... Um, what are some of the best moments that you get to experience while you are doing design and you're working for clients? Like, what are what the does the beginning that... and the end? Yeah, okay, <laughs> that's that. Yeah, I I can <laughs> I can agree with yeah, that. Yeah, and then certain installs along the way, but I mm-hmm. think the beginning is such an exciting time for the client. Yep, and um, you too as a designer because you're like and me. This. Yeah, exactly. So you you know in the beginning we we it's a, it's a very like heavy time for us as designers yeah. because you have to think of everything off the bat. Mm-hmm. So that design process is very tenuous and, um, you know, we put a lot of work into this. And then we have this awesome presentation, or at least I do. I do a design presentation. Mm-hmm. And normally the clients are so over the moon excited mm-hmm. and love the design. And then that kind of affirms for me, like, okay, I'm doing the right thing, yeah. you know? And then it's like the... Uh, kind of work of, okay, now I have to do all the paperwork of documenting everything for the trades, getting all the drawings done, all of that. Um, and then the on-site, the actual construction phase, I find is stressful. It's mm-hmm. time consuming. No matter how much you try to organize yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like m- one of the words in my business name is planning because I think yeah. it's so important, the planning yes. portion of yeah. any renovation. But even as much planning goes in, there's always going to be kind of on-site little fires mm-hmm. that you have to put out all the time. Mm-hmm. So that's a little bit of a stressful time. So I would say the beginning is so exciting when you're presenting your concepts. Um, and then... It, Along the way, like as installs start to happen, um, those are also kind of highlights for me, you know, when a kitchen is installed mm-hmm. or when countertops are installed, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Um, but those can also be stressful because there's little issues or, you know, they have, have to, to fix. Yeah. yeah. And then the end. And we were talking about that now. Mm-hmm. I have a project that's coming to uh, a close and we're going to be photographing it within the next month. And that's always my highlight of any project mm-hmm. is getting those photos Whatever in else, my yeah. inbox because it's just validation that, you know, all that hard work has paid off. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because as I said that, um, when I was deciding to change careers, when I was in computer software, I was within the project management sector. Mm-hmm. And so I was managing Pro- software projects, okay. right? And my husband said, you know, you're really great at managing projects, but what I've seen with this build that like our own house build is that it, there's a tangible outcome that mm-hmm. you can see mm-hmm. at the end of it. Yep. And that's, that's what excites true. you. Yeah. The and, reveal. And totally it, it is. Yeah. And it's not like the reveal that you see on HGTV. <laughs> it's more like the reveal for yeah. me yes. as a designer seeing your project come to fruition and yeah. kind of all your hard work. So it's, yeah. it's, uh, I, I can totally agree because at the end, when you see your vision coming to life, it's very rewarding. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk a little bit about your portfolio because it is amazing yeah, and you. you've you know and and it's not just because you're a good designer and you have a good eye for design but what I've always appreciated about your work because I've been following you and your journey since the beginning it's your work ethic and it's something that I always tell people who question you know ask me about how can they do better or how can they improve and I always say design is maybe five percent of being a business owner you know of course design is important but how you get your points across, how you communicate, you know, how the processes you put in place and everything, those are equally important. Yes. And the way that you do that with your clients is amazing. Like you talked a little bit about presentation yeah. and you always make sure that it's laid out for the clients in a very visual way so that there's no room for question or error. So talk to me a little bit about what that process looks like for you and for somebody who's listening and wants to, you know, do their own business. What can they take from that? Yeah. So process 
process is huge. Yeah. Um, and I was actually, I was, I was going to mention this earlier that, you know, you're totally right with design being like 5%, yeah. right? The business side, and that's, I think, where a lot of design businesses will fail yes. is because oh, as creatives, we're not interested in the business. Yeah. Side yeah. The most you have part. to, yeah. Right. Oh my God. Yeah. And so, but what I, what I found is there's so many great um, resources out there, like successful designers who have now started coaching. Mm -hmm. And so that's something I did early on was okay. um, the business of design with right. really Selden. Right. I think I told you about that. I do not follow her process anymore, but in the beginning I did. Um, and it gave me like um, a roadmap mm -hmm. of, you know, a, this is what I should be following mm -hmm. that I could look back on and get myself on track. Like a benchmark to what is exactly. best practices. Yes, best practices. Yeah. And then as I used her process, mm -hmm. I developed my own. Mm -hmm. I saw what worked from her processes and what didn't work mm -hmm. and what um, kind of like key points that I was like, in every project I'm doing this, okay, I should make that like a formal step in yep. my process. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. And it's always evolving. I find that um, with every project, I see a flaw in my process mm, and I'll and try, fix to, it. try to fix it. With that being said, it's very hard um, when you're running your business on your own to do all the things. And I think that the process side of things sometimes falls kind of to the bottom of the right. pile. You but know? you're saying that it shouldn't because it, it shouldn't. should be a priority, right? It like should always above be everything. A process because if it's not, then you struggle a lot as a yes. designer, being getting paid on time, all yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Like even even me, you know, I realized three months after my one of my invoices was due that I hadn't even invoiced the client. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, for me, I think money is the biggest thing. I, if I could not deal with one cent, I would be happy. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't like dealing with money at all. Me neither. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of designers don't. Yeah. Right. And that's why kind of working with a contractor would be great if they could just like manage all the money. Yeah. That would be, but yeah. that's in a perfect world. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So my process now, I try to keep it fairly simple. Um, I, do a proposal, which that's something new that I've implemented. So I, I, I always had a contract, but I didn't um, make it specific to the project, mm -hmm. which has been amazing. So when we kind of like do the discovery of the scope, I'm able to outline it in my proposal. And then I can always look back at that proposal to be like, well, what did I include? Mm -hmm. Did I include millwork for every room in this house? Right. Or only certain areas, yep. that sort of thing. And then it also outlines the fee schedule, which then I can make sure that I put milestones on my mm -hmm. calendar so I remember to invoice. Um, and, and see, that's, this is so important. Like yeah. all these things. I know because I do talk to so many designers. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of us think about that. No. And I, I think about it only because I came from a business background. So this was like nature for me to have those milestones in, in place, you know, and you mm -hmm. came from project management too, but I guess some but designers. Our business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> business is a whole other yeah, ball game. It is. Like, yeah. oh, I should have taken business in high school. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, there, you know, I always encourage people to take a course, like a, fl a crash course on that, just so yeah. you can develop that you know, that part of your brain, because if that part of your brain's not there, your business is not going to succeed. Yeah. It is a business at the end of yeah, the day. Right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. And what, what does that look like? And yeah. it looks like, you know, different for everybody, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I think, um, when, when I get questions around design and business, I always encourage them to listen. Like I know you also said you, you were listening to this, uh, Kimberly who yeah. helped you with your design process. Um, are there any other kind of design coaches or gurus that, you know, you think are really good and have helped you become a little bit more confident in what you're doing? Yeah. So I think your YouTube videos are great. Oh my God. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah. but seriously, like I, it's funny because we've kind of gone through the journey at the same yeah. pace. And, um, so like, I yeah. think those are great for right. anybody and you get tons of questions. It's like awesome. transparent, you know, I always yeah. kind of let yeah. people know it's not peaches and cream. Yeah, just be ready. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Rebecca Hay also. Yep. Um, I really like, I enjoy her podcast. I don't do any of her coaching. Like I don't pay for any coaching. I yep. paid for one year of business of design. Yep. Like the actual membership is quite expensive. And for like a new business owner, it was very hard okay. to keep up, but I yep. think I got what I needed yep. out of it. 
Um, so Rebecca Hay, and then there's Luann Nigera as okay. well, who I I went to the um, Kitchen and Bath Industry Show this past year, and she was one of the speakers. Okay. Um, and I really appreciated her kind of like raw. She's a New Yorker, and like she's just very blunt and mm. um, to the point, which is how I am as well. Yeah. And so I listen to her quite a bit. I would say. Her and Rebecca Hay are probably, like, the two. Yeah. I agree. I think Rebecca Hay is really good, too, because Mm -hmm. she puts herself in situations which can be related by every designer. So you're able to be like, oh, this happens to even the most successful designers as well. Yeah. And it makes you feel a little bit less stressed out. Mm -hmm. So um, that's another thing which is really important. You have to surround yourself with, you know, people who are doing the same thing as you. Because when I started design, and I don't know if you felt like that, too, where I felt that everybody was was quite secretive in the way that yeah. they do things and they weren't really willing to share. Um, I, you know, I approached so many different people to network and I didn't really get that strong of a response. But it's so important to be connected to people like yourself and other people because during times when you are struggling and during times where you're coming into problems, you can go to your best friend or your partner. They don't understand. They don't understand. They will never understand because they're not doing the job that you're doing. But a person like you will always understand and, you know, give me the support that I need, whether it's just through listening to me or anything. And it matters so much. Like it really picks you back up. Yeah. And I think so how I kind of said, you know, there was so much business to go around at the beginning when I started is that's kind of how I looked at it. So Mm -hmm. I forgot to mention when I started, I actually mentored with another local designer close to me. um, And she had been in business for about 12 years. She's now a close friend of mine. Okay. Um, And we live very close. So our markets are pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. uh, But we're, I don't consider her competition. Right. I consider her a friend and a colleague. Mm. And I kind of aspire to be like her. Mm -hmm. You know, her work is great. Um, she, anyway, so she offered a mentoring kind of coaching program. So I did a few sessions with her. She was very transparent Mm. and she's kind of said, you know, there's so much work to go around. So we shouldn't be, you know, holding things close to our chest. We need to actually have a network. And so I think I started my business with that in mind. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to ever be closed to others because yeah. uh, they can relate to me and I can relate to them. And they can teach you something that yeah, you wouldn't so have much. Known. And it makes you feel sane. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, we totally- go through all these crazy roller coasters. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly every time someone asks me how the business is going, I'm like, this is what it, it's like a roller coaster. Uh, There's like the highest of highs, yeah. the lowest of lows. And then yeah. these like winding roads in between yeah you never yeah. really know which and way it's so it's hard to down. articulate that right because yeah. you're so right when friends ask me oh sarah like how's the business going like it's good. Like, i don't know what to tell you yeah, yeah it's good <laughs> but you know you, nobody knows what's in the heart like what's happening yeah. down there yeah yeah and and again we're not alone on our own little island in this it's like it's a collective experience, mm-hmm. I think, mm-hmm. with four people who are being honest. Yeah. Um, and I think that the culture is shifting mm-hmm. to be more open because of like podcasts like mm-hmm. this, where colleagues, I call them colleagues, yep. but you know, like minded yep. professionals are working together and, and, yep. you know, um, asking, asking for advice mm-hmm. or their experiences. And so I think the culture is shifting. Right. I mean, I think that we came into it at a good time. Yeah, that, that's true. You that's know, true. that it is. And, Sound, so yeah. Super traditional. Yeah. Like and he, even the culture with trades, I think with the younger trades coming in, mm-hmm. um, it's more of an open minded, um, it's becoming more of an open minded industry right. versus competitive old school bidding against one another. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. So, that's true. So yeah. what, inspires you to do design every day like what are some of the outlets that you go to oh my gosh and what are your some of your biggest uh role models in design which designers that you look up oh my gosh i love ali bud Oh my God! Who does I it? Love Ali, but she's amazing. I heard, I heard she's getting her show. Yes, I'm very interested yeah. to see what that show is going to be like because 
I tr- fully trust that she'll be th- authentic, her and yeah. like awesome. Um, but what I th- find will be interesting is the types of clients she has. Mm. Very different than the average type yep. of client that yep. you see on HGTV. Yep. That's oh, like, totally. oh, I have fifty thousand dollars to do my kids. Yeah, like <laughs> no, <laughs> they, her clients are like five hundred thousand dollars design fee. Yeah, so oh, like, I know, right? You really know? luxury, high. Yeah, app. but yeah. you know, she also her story is so similar. Like she started in her base, yes, and then and it's like great, it's, right? And and those are the type of stories that makes you want to continue doing it you know okay yes. everyone struggled at the beginning but if you continue hustling and grinding yeah. you're gonna get to a place that you're comfortable yeah. with yeah. yeah exactly so I love Ali Bud I think she's authentic I think she has an amazing style and I think she is really relatable in terms of what you said she always talks about kind of how she started and um and like designing I think as designers we always want to have like a an aesthetic, you yeah, know, yeah. And it's something that for me, I'm like, I don't really know if I have an aesthetic, but I, I'm starting to hear from clients. Yes, you do, and mm-hmm. that's why we chose. You totally, which do. is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you, and, but you can you can hide away from that. Like you have a design yeah. style, and you always go back to that, even though the clients may have so many opinions. Yeah. But you, as a designer, can always be original. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, I love. I also love Le- Le- Leclerc Decor from yep. Ottawa, oh, or like the yeah. Leclerc Decor team. Um, LD shop. Yep. Yeah, they're awesome. Um, I also find with them, they post, they're very transparent about their design fees. Um, yes, you're which right. Is very inspiring yep. because yep. they have like a, I think they said for like a 2,500 square foot home, it was like a hundred grand design fee. And they only source from their own shop. Yeah. Like they make yeah, sure that. Yeah. yeah. And I remember seeing that on their Instagram story and I screenshotted it. And Just as a reminder. Yeah, screenshot it. I put it in my smart. office because yeah. I was like, that's where I want to get to. Yep. You know, yep. that's that's the goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's super smart. Yeah. yeah. And then in terms of inspiration for design, I would say architecture is big. Mm. Um, like the lines within architecture. So residential architecture where I, whenever I'm driving somewhere and I drive a lot because I live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> um, yeah. Like just noticing kind of like lines within architecture, the different styles mm-hmm. um, and, and beautiful properties that like that really really inspires me Mm. um and then obviously like nature in some sort of way um not so much that I'll go on a walk and be like oh now I can design (laughs) yeah not not (laughs) really use rust and oil but I but I just mean like you're you get more creative Mm -hmm. when you know when you're in nature but Mm -hmm. um I would say um designing is very uh I have to be in a specific mood Mm -hmm. and I'm sure you're like that too. Like I'll sit down at my computer and I'm like, no, it's not going to happen today. Mm-hmm. I need to do the admin side okay. today. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's going to happen and I just got to keep going until, mm-hmm. you know, I'm done. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. For, for me, I have something similar where um, when I'm coming across like c- obstacles during the construction or the execution stage, everything seems like it's the most urgent, the most dire problem that anyone is going through, even though there are like floods happening around the world. But in that <laughs> moment, it seems like that is the most problematic issue. And um, one thing that started helping me step away from that was literally going on a bike ride outside, because once you're outside on a trail, the world seems so much bigger and you start to realize, you know what? This is the problem of today. We'll get to it tomorrow. No one's gonna die. It's all good, yeah. you know. And in, in, the, in the design world, because yeah. in the moment you feel like, oh my god, mm-hmm. this happened. How am I gonna fix it? So yeah. that's something that I would say people should do. You know, just step away and yeah. realize, okay, it's not that big of a problem. Yeah, you can resolve it the next day. Yeah, yeah. I think that you become really good at that when you're in this industry. (laughs) (laughs) So I I was mentioning um, before that my dad helps me on a lot of jobs. So my dad was a firefighter. He's Mm. retired now. He's always been a handy guy. And so I have a not so handy husband. Sorry. (laughs) But my dad's really handy. So he had been helping, but he's also like, uh, always stressed out to the mm. max. So mm. every little thing really gets yeah. to him. Yeah. And I just sometimes, okay, it's okay. We'll deal with it. Like, yeah. thank you for telling me. Like, it's all, it's all good. Yeah. But I think it's just because I see it so often. Mm. And I know that every, I mean, my first project, every little thing that was wrong was a, Oh my so gosh, overwhelming. Moment, yeah. Right. Yeah. But then you go through so many where you're like, it will be fixed. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's always a solution for yeah. everything. It's just how do we get there? How do we get um, there? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think you become really good yeah, at that. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so you're now in your third year yeah. and you've 
even won awards, I think, right? For yeah. Your jobs, which is like amazing yeah. to me. So thank you. Um, how do you grow from here and what do you have I, in store I for knew yourself? That this was going to come up. Yeah. That is the biggest question. <laughs> Scaling a business is hard. I know. It's hard. Yeah. And, and I kind of identifying where you want to take it. Right. Um, and again, it, it's the same thing that I said with the processes. It's like, it should be like on your calendar mm-hmm. every week mm-hmm. to think about and it always gets you know, put it at the bottom of the pile. So for me, when I started out, because the business kind of grew out of me, general contracting my own house, I was contracting all my own jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm still doing that to, to a point. But my vision is that I will work more closely with builders, contractors, developers, okay. and so that I can I can focus more on the design and sourcing portion than than the project management. Um, so right now, that's kind of something I'm feeling out with a few local contractors, mm-hmm. um, and I'm starting some jobs following a little bit of a different process than mm-hmm. I'm used to. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that for me is kind of top of mind right now. Um, on the flip side, it's deciphering, should I keep my model that has been mm. working really great, mm-hmm. keep the contracting side and scale up in terms of employees? Right. Um, yeah. yeah. Because if I was going to keep that, I would really have to have a full-time project manager mm-hmm. um, and and possibly like a junior designer or an assistant. Yeah. I was really, really lucky to have the most amazing co-op student this summer oh, from awesome. Fanshawe. So she actually is in her fourth year of Bachelor of Interior Design. And having her really um, solidified that I would like to have a team. Okay, of that's good. good. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. But as you like know, I work in my basement right now, yeah. um, and so I only have spots for two of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so if I want to scale up, it's you know you have to find a spot, a spot and a space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would say like the five year plan would be to have my own space and have at least I would say mm-hmm. five employees, mm-hmm. um, and then that way that would enable me to kind of grow the business mm-hmm. as I want to and that's, and keep the contracting portion. That's amazing. So, I yeah. think that's the way to go. Like as soon as you start getting a lot of business that you alone cannot manage, yeah, the best thing you can do for your mental stability yeah. uh, is you know let's let's add on another designer junior designer and yeah. and um there's not too many positions open around for that because there's are so many solo entrepreneurs yeah. such as ourselves i'm sure people are willing to die yeah. you know yeah i want to i want to work um uh, for you. So yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, I would say at this time, what would be your words of inspiration for people who want to pursue this as a career? Uh, maybe some things that they should be prepared for before they dive in, you know, head first. So I <laughs> yes. always love hearing that from other fellow designers. Yeah. Um, it is hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, um, make sure that you have thick skin. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure that you're not afraid of taking risks and that it's not just creating mood boards and right. shopping all day. Right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> because I think that, like, you know, have you ever seen those memes where it's like, what my husband thinks I do? Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. You know, like yeah, that. yeah. Um, I think that. Like a lot of people watch HGTV and just, it, it's just, it seems so easy mm-hmm. and it seems mm-hmm. so glamorous and it's not. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I appreciate about you yeah. is that you show those non-glamorous yeah. sides. Yeah. And I think we're getting better at kind of being more authentic Community. on Instagram yeah. and stuff. So, um, so don't be afraid to take risks. Uh, don't be afraid to fail. Mm. And, um, it's not the end of the world if, you get it wrong right. because we always get it wrong yeah. and you should always look at those as learning opportunities and um, and you won't make that mistake ever again. I love that. I yeah. think not being afraid to fail is yeah. something that's really important and people should be okay to yeah. accept that. It's right? going to happen. So don't I be love afraid it. of it. I love that. <laughs> um, and if people wanted to learn more about you yes. and find what you're up to and like be sure. involved in your journey, where can they, they get yeah. out of you? So come on Instagram. Yep. So CM Planning and Design is my handle. Um, and then my website as well is www.cmplanningdesign.com. And do you prefer being contacted through email or Instagram? Like yeah. what is your main email? Social? So yeah. nor- if you DM me, I, I, I don't have a huge following on Instagram, so I can mm-hmm. still manage my DMs. Yeah. I usually ask that they email. So it's Kara at cmplanningdesign.com. Awesome. Um, yeah, that I just, you know. That's your way of better. Yeah, yeah. No, and <laughs> yeah, it's documented, yeah, so yeah, it's not exactly. like or call you. What's your price? Because yeah. that's some some 
designers are not comfortable with just yeah. talking to you on the phone about that, yeah. right? Schedule yeah. time and stuff. Yeah, well, exactly. it's been amazing Thank having you here. Thank you so here. much for having oh, me. This was thanks. so fun. I know it was. And we <laughs> finally get to meet each other because we've so been good. in touch for like two years. And then yeah. today is the day. So today I'm really, really happy. Yeah. And, uh, and I can't wait to see what you do next. So, so likewise. <laughs>